In this video, we're going to take a look at what we call the washer method. I alluded to this uh, at the end of the last video, talking about disk method. And I had this specific example up there as well. We were looking at y equals 2 minus x squared and y equals 1, the region bounded by both of those curves, and rotated about the line y equals 1. And I ended the last video saying, what happens if we rotate the region bounded by those two curves instead about the x-axis, okay? So I'm going to switch things up here. I'm now going to rotate about the x-axis instead of y equals 1. And I want to describe the changes there, and I want to use that to develop what we call this washer method, okay? So first thing that we notice is that now the area that we're rotating is removed from the axis that we're rotating it about, okay? And that's really what created the disk from before. We had a slice that was right up against the axis we were talking about. So when we rotate that slice, the slice makes a disk. Okay. If I do that here, I take that same slice, and now I rotate it around a removed axis of rotation, I'm going to get a washer. Okay. And it's tough to see based on that, that image I've drawn there, but that's what it would look like when I rotate that slice around, and I've drawn an arrow through that open hole. There is a hole there that's you know punched out of what I would normally have as a disc, and that's why we call it a washer. So there I've put it on its, on its face, and hard to draw the, the, the slice in that flat version, but there really is a hole cut out of the middle. And using that black arrow, I've shown where that hole is created from, right? It's from all of the space under the slice going down to the axis of rotation, okay? So what we tend to do in situations like this is kind of think about this like two disks instead. I want to kind of think about my top function as the larger disk, if I draw a slice all the way up to that function and rotate that slice around, I create a disk with a large radius, say capital R. And when I rotate then the, the smaller disk bounded by the line y equals 1 to the axis that I'm rotating around, right? That's always where I'm dropping those, those slices. I get a smaller radius, little r. And I've put in there, big R is actually obtained by the height given by the function, right? The height given by the function. So I don't have to subtract the two heights anymore. It's a little deceiving. The, the pink slice that was originally drawn, and when we used our disk method, I took the, the larger height minus the smaller height, top minus bottom. That doesn't quite work here. And it's because the way we handle it is to use kind of an outer disk, a big disk, and subtract the little disk. So my outer disk has a radius of 2 minus x squared up to the purple or pink purple colored function. And my inner disk has a height little r described by that empty space, which is a unit, one unit. Okay? So we really do treat this like two disks. And I'm going to try to explain that as I go. I want to lay things out a little bit in general, but also kind of bring things back to this specific example. So if I draw my washer, that's essentially the same as taking a big disk with capital R as the radius and taking away a little disk with little r as the radius. Okay? I'm actually punching that hole using the disk method. Both of these together is a disk method with capital R minus the disk method with little r, okay? So just how I constructed disk method, I looked at the representative element, right? I looked at the slice or the volume of those disks. So what I've got, dv then, the volume, the representative piece of the whole is the disk method with big R minus the disk method with little r, okay? And I can combine those because they both have a pi and a dx in common. I just factor a little bit and I see capital R squared minus little r squared, 
Okay, And again, that comes from two separate disk methods that I bring together and integrate as one. Okay, So when I integrate, I integrate from A to B. I kind of, in general, keep those bounds the same. And this is really how I think about washer method. Two disks subtracted from one another, and I'm always subtracting the missing piece, right? The, the blank space. Often you'll see this written in uh, terms of the functions, right? So say something like f and g. I don't like thinking about that as, as much. I'd prefer to think about them as two disks with two different radii, but if you're more comfortable with f and g, that's totally okay. This is the washer method, okay? So I want to finish the example that I started, and then I'll do a couple others to show you how things are, are going here. So back to this. What I want to try to do is construct the disk method for both of those slices, the larger pink slice and the smaller yellow slice. Rotating the original lighter pink slice around creates a washer, okay? And that's the washer that I want to use, want to find, basically. And I do that by looking at the two other slices, kind of large radius and small radius, and those two disks, okay? So the method we choose is based on the shape we get when we rotate the slice or the representative element around the axis of rotation, okay? That's how I choose the method for the most part. So I'm going to describe the first disk method with that pink, uh, with the pink function and the pink slice as V1. That's going to be the integral from minus 1 to 1. Remember, we found those bounds last time in the last video from minus one to one of the height of that slice, right? The height of that slice is the function, and that's gonna be the radius. It's gonna be two minus x squared, and I square that, right? Radius squared. That's the disk method, and again, that's like my capital R squared, okay? Next, I do a very similar thing, but for the smaller disk, what I'm punching out, what I'm taking away, and that's the slice drawn in yellow. So what I do is I come up with V2, the volume generated by rotating that slice around the x-axis, and actually then the region kind of below that around the x-axis, okay? So what I get is then the integral, again, from minus 1 to 1, and that radius is only going to be 1, right? The height of that function is just 1, and that's what I'm thinking of as my little r, okay? The washer method brings these two disks together. I take v1 and I subtract from it v2 to get a new volume, v1, or I'm sorry, v, the total volume of this region when I rotate it around the x-axis, is the integral, pi times the integral from minus one to one of, I've got capital R squared, so I'm just gonna replace that, two minus x squared squared minus little r squared is one squared, okay? I can use symmetry here again, and I'm going to do that. So what, I'm, what I've done in that next line is I've squared uh, two minus x squared, I've squared that out, I've expanded, I'm going to combine like terms, and then I'm going to apply some symmetry. I'm going to say that I can find this volume simply by taking 2 times the integral there and changing my balance instead of from minus 1 to 1 to 0 to 1. Okay? And that's going to help simplify a little bit of the, of the fundamental theorem of calculus at the end, my, my computation. Okay? Combining like terms on the inside there gives me a 3 minus 4x squared plus x to the fourth. And when I integrate all that and, and plug in 1 and 0, I end up with 56 pi divided by 15. So you're welcome to go back and actually integrate that and make sure that you get 56 pi over 15. Okay. I want to go through another example. Find the volume of the solid formed by uh, revolving the region bounded by the square root of x and x about the x-axis. Okay, 
So a similar type approach. I don't really know what method to use yet. I might be able to use disk. I might be forced to use two disks into a washer method. And it just kind of depends on what region I'm rotating around and if the region is removed from the, the slice or not. So I'm going to try to draw this. I've got three different um, things bounding my region here. Here's my x, y axis. So what I want to try to do is come up with a way to graph these. I know what the square root of x looks like, and I know what y equals x looks like, but I just want to be careful of some of the details going on because measuring distances here is going to be very important on, on how I construct my slices. So I can do that by first finding intersecting points. So I'm going to set square root of x and x equal to one another and find out where they intersect. Now I'm going to square both sides and solve, bringing all the x's to one side, and it looks like I get two values, 0 and 1. Okay, so I'll plot those in just a moment. But those two curves intersect when x is 0 and 1. Okay, but I need to know which is larger, right? Which, which graph is on top, which is bigger from 0 to 1. We can test a value, say 1 half. Okay, so I'm going to take one half and I'm going to plug it in to both square root of x and x and without a calculator or uh, another tool doing one half in a radical square root is a little bit tricky. Why don't we try to do a fourth instead? I'm going to take the square root of a fourth, I get a half, which is bigger than what I plugged in, right? It's bigger than x. One half is larger than one fourth. So the square root of x is then larger than x, at least on the interval from 0 to 1. Okay, I know those two functions intersect 0 to 1. So let's graph those. There's y equals x. And I know they intersect at 0 and 1. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow up the scale a little bit so we can see more of what's going on. Kind of have things zoomed in. And I know square root of x, excuse me, has this kind of shape. I'm going to draw it the best of my ability here. That's the square root of x. And I know these intersect at 0 and 1. And from what I know so far, square root of x is larger, right? It's bigger on that interval. So there's my two intersection points. And this is the region that I will be rotating about the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a slice here, and I'm going to see what that looks like when I rotate about the x-axis. Since I have some space removed, that slice rotated around is going to give me a washer. So I should be using the washer method here. I've got a bunch of blank space. So when I rotate that slice, it gives me a washer. And again, the way I handle this is to think about two areas instead. I know I'm going to need a capital R and a little r and square each one. So let's draw these two slices. First there is in yellow. That's going to be like my capital R. That guy has a height of the square root function, right? The height's going to change for whichever x I choose. I've just chose to draw the slice in that location, right? And its height is the square root of x. It's the square root of whatever x I choose, okay? Another slice here, drawn in pink, is going to be the slice made by the smaller function. That has a height of little r. It's the smaller radius, right? It's the smaller slice, and it has a height of x, okay? When I rotate each of those slices separately around the x-axis, I get disks, yes? One disk has a larger radius, the other has a smaller radius, and I'm going to remove the smaller radius from the larger one. Remove the disk made by r equals little x, little r equals x, I'm sorry, from the larger disk made by capital R, and that's going to give me then that slice. It's going to give me the washer that I really want. Okay. So the way we look at this is the integral from 0 to 1. And again, 0 to 1 we found before with the x or I'm sorry, with the intersection points. And I'm going to take capital R, which is the square root of x, and I'm going to square it, and subtract little r, which is x, 
and I'm going to square it, dx. Once we integrate, it's not pi, but once we integrate, I end up with pi over 6. Okay, so take some time and actually evaluate that antiderivative and plug in 0 and 1, and you should end up with pi over 6. So this is a mostly straightforward example where I've got some removed space. I've shown you how I've kind of drawn this region, how I construct it, and how I think about taking apart that washer and really treating it like two disks. I combine the methods, or I combine the, the integrals kind of right away there. This one's one of those ones that we can probably just go right to kind of the formula with. Okay, I want to do one more. How would this change? The volume, if I revolve that same region, the previous example, around instead, not the x-axis, but y equals minus 1. So I'm going to bring that picture back. But instead here of revolving about the x-axis, I'm going to revolve around y equals minus 1. Okay, so the same slice rotated around is still going to give me a washer. Right, just notice that there's a lot more empty space this time than there was before. And again, I'm pretty zoomed in here. My scales may be a little bit off, but nonetheless, I should still get a washer from this. Okay, so I'm going to draw my two slices again. There's the one in yellow. And I want to figure out the height of that slice along with the smaller slice. So basically the same, but again, now these are dropping all the way down to the axis of rotation, right? Because I'm revolving around the axis y equals minus one, I'm drawing the slices to go down to that axis, okay? The larger slice still in yellow is going to have a height of the function. So from zero to one, that, ooh, it's not quite the height of the function, right? The height of the function is from the x-axis up to the square root function. I've got more than that, right? I've got this whole blank space in between that I have to consider. That's the height of the function, yeah? When I plug in an x, that's the height I get. I've got another whole bit here, and that has a height kind of of negative 1, right? It's in the negative direction. So how do I incorporate that whole height of this kind of new larger radius of, of this disk from the yellow slice rotated around? I've got to subtract. I've got to subtract because it's minus a negative, right? That is going to make it plus. Basically, what I've got is the height of my function plus another whole unit. The subtraction will always work itself out. You say I've got to add one unit to that, of course minus a negative one is that whole unit. It's that top minus bottom. I'm still using that here, okay? So it's a little bit confusing. I've changed my axis of rotation. The region that I'm rotating does not change, okay? And that's very important. And that's why I'm allowed to integrate from zero to one still. But the slices that I'm working with now are larger, okay? I'm taking away more area from or so more volume from a larger disk to begin with. Okay, let's look at the second one here. It's very similar idea. That pink slice has a height first given by x, right, from the x-axis up to x, and then also including the height of minus 1. Subtract, and I get x plus 1 which should make sense, right? I'm adding more area by moving the axis of rotation down. So instead of just x being the height, it should be x plus some, okay? Again, subtract these two to get my final volume, okay? Big disk minus little disk. When I evaluate these, right, I've got to be a little careful. I'm just gonna simplify the subtraction, the double negative, First, I go to the square root of x plus 1, all squared, minus x plus 1, all squared. Okay? I can expand both of those and integrate them all. I'm just going to go kind of right to the answer. If you'd like me to show you, 
you'd be more than happy. Just write a comment, send a message, uh, and I can I can explain and go further. But for the most part, from here, the integral is going to give us, it's set up in a way that it's going to give us the volume that we're looking for, and that volume happens to be pi over 2. Okay, so as soon as I change the axis of rotation, the method didn't really change here. It might, depending on how we change the axis of rotation, but the pieces that we were working with did change a bit. Okay, so my advice is to take the region that you're given, think about the axis that you're revolving it around, and what the slice would give you, right, the slice here, what happens when I take that slice in my region and rotate it around? What shape do I get? Do I get a disc or do I get a washer? Okay, that should indicate which method you use. If it's a washer, we treat it like two separate larger discs. Okay, all right, that's it for the disc and washer method. Please practice some more examples. I can't possibly show you everything um, that, that can come up in, in a section or technique like this. Uh, next, we'll look at a slightly different technique for handling situations similar, um, but it's, it's with a different kind of shape. Thanks for watching.